Welcome back to another National 5 Chemistry lesson. We're still in Unit 3 on the topic of metals, but the subject for this video is going to be electrochemical cells. And electrochemical cells are ways in which we can use metals to generate electrical power. So we're going to be um, using redox reactions of metals in order to do these electrochemical cells or make these electrochemical cells. So some recap. Reduction is the gain of electrons by a metal or by any material. And oxidation is the loss of electrons. Different metals have a different ability to be reduced. So some metals or metal ions will um, be reduced much more easily than other ones. And we can exploit or use this difference in ability to create things called electrochemical cells. Now, electric, electrochemical cells are what form the basis of batteries. And a battery is obviously a device which stores chemical energy and can be used to convert it into electrical energy. So uh, these lessons are forming the basis of what is a battery. So electrochemical cells, there are two kinds of electrochemical cells. Electrochemical cells look similar to an electrolysis experiment. However, where an electrolysis ex experiment has a power source, an electrical, electrochemical cell does not need a power source. So the first type of electrochemical cell is called a simple cell. And this contains um, two metals electrodes, which will be connected by a wire, in an electrolyte. And we need to know the definition of an electrolyte. An electrolyte is an electrically conducting liquid that contains ions that are free to move. Um, specifically, what we mean by an electrolyte is a salt that has been dissolved. So an ionic compound dissolved in water is an electrolyte. So it has to be something that contains ions and they need to be in liquid form. Usually it is a dissolved ionic compound, but it can be a melted or molten ionic compound as well. So the cell looks like this. You can see we have got wires connecting two metal um, rods, which we call electrodes, and they are inside a solution. So the electrodes are our magnesium ribbon and a copper plate. The electrolyte, remember, um, our solution is sodium chloride this time. And it's important to remember that an electrolyte must be ionic solution. So it must be a solution of a compound made from a metal and a non-metal. There is a second type of electrochemical cell made of two half cells. Um, and this is where we have two different metals um, in a solution of their own ions, and then that is connected by an ion bridge, or sometimes called a salt bridge. Now that bridge is required to link the two half cells together to allow ions to move across between the two um, half cells to complete the electrical circuit. And as I said, the ion bridge is sometimes called a salt bridge. So this um, two half cells or ion bridge setup looks like this. So on our left hand side, what we have is a copper electrode, so that's copper metal, and this time the solution or the electrolyte that it is in has to be a copper solution. So it's copper sulfate. On the right hand side, we've, this time we've got an electrode made of zinc and that also needs to be in a solution of its own ions. So the electrolyte on the right hand side is zinc sulfate. That salt bridge is usually either a bit of paper or something that can absorb um, liquid that has been soaked in an ion solution. Now that salt bridge can have any electrolyte in it. Often it will be sodium chloride. Um, 
to just something that has ions that connects the two cells together. Because remember, if you want an electrical circuit, it has to be complete. So the two half cells um, are copper in copper sulfate solution, zinc in zinc sulfate solution, and you can change those metals for any type of metal, and then the salt bridge in the middle. That salt bridge, sometimes called the ion bridge. Now, voltage or electrical energy can be produced in either of the two types of cells where at least one of the half cells does not contain metal atoms or ions. So only one non-metal can be used as an electrode in this case, and that is carbon in the form of graphite. And this is due to graphite being able to conduct electricity. So remember, graphite um, is one of the is isomers of um, diamond, uh, sorry, of carbon, other one being um, diamond. Uh, and uh, what separates graphite from diamond is that uh, graphite can conduct electricity. Now, if we want to create voltage, we need to use uh, graphite as one of our um, uh, electrodes. Now, voltage is basically, it is the stored ability of uh, electrons uh, to want to move from one place to another place. So where we have two different metals, because each metal has a different ability to be reduced or oxidized, the electrons will move to whichever metal um, has the um, better ability to uh, be uh, oxidized. So whichever one will lose electrons best will give its electrons away. And um, that is the basis for the electrochemical series. Now that sounds quite uh, complicated in words, but essentially all this means is that the further apart two elements are on page 10 um, of the data booklet, the greater the voltage they will be, uh, that they will be able to produce. So for example, if we had an electrochemical cell and one of the metals that we used was nickel. So if this was one of our electrodes. If we used zinc, they are quite close. So that would be a small voltage. However, if we used nickel and we used magnesium, that one would have, because they are far, that would be a large voltage. So if you're given a series of metals, the further apart they are, the bigger the voltage. And the voltage is essentially the desire for electrons to move from one metal to the other metal. And it is to do with the difference in abilities of metals to um, be reduced or oxidized. Further apart, bigger the voltage.